All right, bud. So we're going to work on a little bit of this grip of yours. I'm sure you had some time with the coaches already. Okay, because that's right now it's very, very stretched. You know, you got a right hand stretched this way, and there's a little bit of a gap here. And the grip is really the sense of a grip. And I'll step up and show you real fast. Is and we'll do this together. Come on up, actually. So here's a left arm, a left arm that's pushing a little bit, and here's a right hand that's pulling a little bit. Okay, so the unity of it feels like that arm is pushing long, and this one is pulling. So if you take your right hand off and just hold the club up with your left hand, okay, so you're going to feel as you push, there's a subtle pull, about equal, about that much. So see how that feels nice and unified? So that's got a slight structural push. This one's got a commensurate pull, and that gives a nice unified look on a grip and hands. Okay, so none of this splay stuff. And I know you want to avoid the slicey stuff, right? But your slice, but what you do to fix a slice? Let me have a club for a sec. You've got, you've kind of got this stretchy grip down here, so you can maybe square the face late. And I don't want you needing to square the face late. I want the face in a better spot, so you don't have to worry about trying to square it. Yeah. Okay, come on back. Then we'll take a look at your swing. Because I think once we tackle some of the grip stuff, we'll be in good shape. Okay, so let's have a look at you here. So I see a, a, I guess see a guy with his right arm really trying to square a face to make sure the ball doesn't go left. And you know, and the, and the impact looks pretty good, Mahesh. And there's a little bit of a chicken wing, and the head's a little bit late watching the ball. You know, so it's a little bit uh, out of out of sequence. So when I'm watching this, posture's fine. You know, we refer to the golf swing in positions. Position one's address, and in your address position, we're going to kind of angle you a little differently like right now your house looks a little tilted on top of its foundation meaning that the, your house looks a little bit like it's just kind of crooked up here almost the leaning tower of Mahesh right rather than a little bit more right on top of you know and so that subtlety would look like this it would be um pretty easy for you to, to do because if you see, if I set up, and if I'm afraid of slicing it, I might be inspired to kind of preset myself, right, to not slice it, but the the uh, structure I'm looking for would be a little subtly different than what you got going on. You see what I mean? I'm looking for this position where I have an opportunity for the club to work shallowly inside out and really smash a golf ball. Okay. Uh huh. No, no, and, and we're not talking much weight. I'll, I'll show you why. Yeah, so I mean, this is, you know, you do a pretty good job here, really. I mean, this is a good athletic also. I think you're going to do really well, really fast. So let's get you up there. Get on that mat. Let's give you some some of these subtleties to get you organized. Good. So let's put this. There's the ball line. There's the tar parallel to the target line. Good. So the these hands still need to be a lot more together, like very much, like these four fingers and these. So you you overlap, right? Okay, good. So the four fingers of the left hand and the two fingers of the right hand are going to create the smallest space they can on the grip from here to here. Okay, they're not splayed down. Okay, now there's a little bit of a trigger finger with the index finger. Yeah, that's it. Unify those hands. That looks like a golfer right there, bud. That guy, that's golf hands, okay? Really good. Set that club behind the ball, Mahesh. Okay? Now the next little piece, don't move a thing, is all we're going to do is this. I'm going to take your pelvis and I'm going to push it I'm going to rotate it a bit. There you go. So that's as much weight as you need on your left foot. Okay, so now you're set up sort of inside out. You with me? Now, just for funsies, hit one. Yeah, hit one. 
Good. So that would have been a draw. I'm pretty certain of it. Come on over and take a look. Yeah, on the way the pelvis setup is. So when you when you watch where this club's coming from, it's still a little steep, okay? And I'll show you what's happening here. So as this club is, well, that's probably, you know, we'll need a push because the face and path are pretty matched up to the right. So setup looks a lot different, right? And you're not hitting down a hill on the right screen, I assure you, that's a level. But you see how that looks more like a guy who's a high-level player? Because we just moved your pelvis a little bit and didn't necessarily push it left, rotated it closed a sliver, okay? And then let's have a look here. We're trying to unify those hands. Well, yeah, you you know, you want to take it a bit more around you than you do up. We can take a look here. So position one, position two, position two, the club travels to its first parallel. And right now, you know, your first parallel is a little bit behind your hands, a little bit too around, okay? Position three is a little too deep as well. Your left arm, your left arm's first parallel. Okay. So your position, th let's say, gets you going to position three. Yeah, I'd say position three would stop you here. Hands more feeling like they're reaching away from you. You know what I mean? Rather than working behind you, that would get you, you know, in a little bit better spot. And then you can kind of see how the influence of your right arm tilts the shaft. Yeah, yeah, it starts getting it steep, right? It steepens it. And so what I want to explain to you before we go to lunch is uh, if you stand on that mat for me for a second. Go ahead and get up there. And show me position one with a slightly different pelvis location. So, you know, you feel your pelvis is rotated a little closed. Okay. Good. Your hands are push-pull together. This index finger is there, not yeah, not stretched down, just just there. That's perfect. Okay, hands push pull together. This arm is a little bit more out. Okay, this is a little higher. That looks phenomenal. Good. So there's position one, position two, first parallel. You can refer to your that screen right there. Okay, position three. Let me, let me take the shoulder down, turn, 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 turn. Good. Position three. Okay, take a look at yourself. See here, your left arm is pointed to the right some, but it's not super, super, super deep. It's deep, but it's perfect. Okay, good. Now, if if I if you weren't a strong guy, if I rotated you hard toward the ball this way, this club is always going to fall into the plane of rotation. The pro reason why it doesn't, and let me show you what I mean. You hold the club up here. You got it? You hold it right there. Hold on one sec. Okay, and if I take your shoulders, and I'm going to go here, here, here. Okay, now let me show you what happened. Come on over. This is called lag. Okay. So on the right screen here, I walk over, I push you forward. But right now the club is lagging, whipping back. Okay, then see how it goes in shallows? Okay. Well, if, the, if you have strong fingers but mobile wrists, the weight of the club is going to want to shallow you into this plane of rotation. So here's the plane of rotation I'm moving you on. I'm moving you on here. I'm moving you just... Parallel to the ground, right? And then as as I take you back and move you back toward the white hitting net, the club's going to fall into that plane of rotation, right? So what happens with guys is, you know, when you're strong, instead of the club kind of falling into this plane of rotation, which is on a different angle now, you're strong enough to tilt it rather than let it fall. See the difference? Okay. So it, I'm just trying to illustrate the point, and that's perfect on the right. On the left, it's a little tilty, a little steep, and that's what's going to create that potential fady bias, okay? So that's where I'll say to you, strong fingers, mobile wrists, and let's get these hands on perfect. 
and the the problem will be like when you when I'm doing this to you and I'm taking you back to the target, you look at that and go, well, the face is opening. Well, we can't square the face early because then we're going to have to reverse it late, right? We got to just trust that it's gonna it's gonna get through rotation and square. Okay, so hit one more shot and we'll go to lunch. So let's build, if, if all you do this weekend is have the best looking grip, that's worth it, believe me, because you'll have that the rest of your life. Okay, so this right index finger just a bit more under, that's perfect, and the hands have a push-pull to them. That humerus bone's a bit more on top of your pec, okay, and the hands are just a sliver higher, just a sliver, good, okay. I know this is styly stuff, but the fact is, when you look awesome, there's something, like you look awesome, okay. Now, whether you hit this good or not, strong fingers, liquidy wrists, go ahead and hit one. Okay, a little chunky. So we'll train in this, we'll train in this right arm of yours. Is this right arm's problematic? You know? Yeah. Right, it draws, it pulls too much. Right, the club gets behind you a little too far, buddy. You know what I mean? So what could be set up here? You know, set up about right. You kind of set it up a little behind you, but the club, the see how it's, that's better. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's coming from the inside, right? And you just and it's just got to be. We got to keep on. I mean, that's pretty close, but it really, really is. Okay. I'm telling you, you're going to get it. You are going to get it.